Okay, well, it is half past here on the Pacific side of the country, so we'll kick it off and open up. And I want to welcome everyone to the 2023 EMSL um, user meeting. I'm Douglas Manns, EMSL director. Um, I'm happy to say that Saturday turned out properly, and, and luckily for us, otherwise my script would be very, very different for this opening introduction. Um, but I wanted to welcome everyone here on site. Uh, we're in year two coming out of sort of COVID and, and bringing us back on site. So it's great to see everyone. Uh, we also have virtual participants. So welcome to everybody online, wherever you are. I know, unfortunately, our BER colleagues were not able to, to join us. So uh, for those of you online from BER, uh, welcome. Hopefully you enjoyed the, the session. Um, let's see here, there we go. So we have a variety of great presentations and workshops uh, and uh, social networking that I know Chris and Kristen and the committee have put together for you all. So it's going to be chock full uh, of science for these next three days. So it should be super exciting. Um, during the meeting, uh, we'll highlight a range of premier research capabilities and themes uh, focused around visualizing chemical processes across the environment. Each of the presentations and plenary talks over the next few days will focus on the following topics. Uh, the area of biological cartography, building methods to map cellular and molecular processes across scales from microbes to rhizospheres, spatially resolved integrative omics for revealing functional bi uh, fundamental biological processes within cells and tissue functional units, and multimodal imaging for refining and advancing the, the use of in situ tools in a synergistic fashion to address key environmental processes using complementary imaging capabilities. It be a fantastic and information-filled, fun-filled uh, few days. Um, on Thursday, we'll have the opportunity to participate in some hands-on workshops. So I would encourage you, if you haven't already, uh, to sign up for some of the workshops that ha still have seats available. And I know Kristen and Chris will have a bit more detail on that uh, in the next uh, session coming up after me. Um, also, I want to make you aware, if you weren't, uh, of a special session that we have uh, as part of our user meeting with our user executive committee. So today at 12.50 in room horizon C is one of these here. Is this it? Okay. Um, is a session with our user executive committee. So we actually have um, the vast majority of our committee here on site. We had our user executive committee meeting yesterday. Um, and so this is a session that they put on to gather and talk with the user community uh, absent EMSL leadership. So it's a, it's a, it's a main means for them to interact with all of you and gather input. They are the vehicle of sort of communicating with the EMSL leadership and conveying uh, user needs and interests, et cetera. So uh, I encourage you to, to reach out and, and attend that session as well. And then a special thank you uh, to Thermo Fisher Scientific, who graciously sponsored um, this evening's poster session and social networking hour. The festivities will begin tonight at 450, 440, sorry, uh, right out here in the, the gathering space in Discovery Hall. Um, and there'll also be a presentation from one of the Thermo Fisher representatives as well, uh, talking about some of their offerings for us. And I know you want to get to the science, and so you want to get me off the stage as soon as possible, but uh, just a couple uh, housekeep housekeeping items for you. I just want to take a moment to highlight a few of our upcoming events that might be of interest to you. Um, so this year in November, uh, I invite you all to join us for our inaugural Monet Community Science Meeting. This event features two days of lectures, tutorials, and hands-on meetings for those who attend in person. Uh, there will be a virtual option about methods and data types collected through our Mo Molecular Observation Network, or MONET, uh, which is gathering soil cores across the country for continental scale molecular views of soil dynamics. You also learn about plans for our Monet proposal calls in FY24 and help us plan focused community research campaigns in the uh, fiscal year 24. The event is free to attend and you can register online by following the link or the QR code on the screen. <clears throat> In-person attendance is limited. So if you're interested, I would encourage you to please sign up and register now, although there will be a virtual option for attendance as well. Uh, looking into next year, uh, in mid to late to mid to late July, uh, we'll host our annual, our sixth annual uh, EMSL Summer School, which is a week long event that we put on. Our topic next year is focused on what we call the Thousand Fungal Proteins Project. This is a project that we've just started to ramp up here in EMSL, which is looking to connect structure and functional relationships of proteins and biomolecules with uh, unannotated gene sequences and gene families in the fungal kingdom 
And this is largely sort of uh, as a um, piggyback onto the Thousand Fungal Genomes Project that the JGI ran, I think, four or five years ago now. Um, and so it's to start filling in missing sequences of unannotated gene families with actual functional annotation. The summer school is geared toward PhD students, postdocs, and early career researchers. Um, online attendance is free. It will be a virtual hybrid meeting uh, again as usual. Um, but each year we solicit applications and competitively select 25 students uh, to participate in hands-on training that week. So it's a great opportunity for virtual and in-person attendees to interact and learn about the new topics aligned to their field, as well as network uh, and learn a bit more about accessing EMSL resources. Stay tuned for more information about the registration as it gets closer uh, to opening in the year. And finally, we're excited to announce, I know we haven't even started this one, uh, but we've already begun planning for next year's uh, annual user meeting. Uh, the topic is going to be focused on atmospheric processing of terrestrial, coastal, and anthropogenic aerosols. Just like this year's event, uh, the user meeting will take place the first full week of October. So you can start to plan now and, and book your, your attendance if you want. More information on how to register for next year's event will be shared as we get further in the year as well. Uh, it will also be offered as a hybrid event again. Uh, and lastly, before I leave, I wanted to extend a giant thank you to the organizing committee, uh, Kristen and, and Chris, as well as all of the other folks listed on the slide here. Um, these meetings are huge lifts. Um, there's a lot of logistics and negotiations and, and sometimes pandering that has to happen to get people to, uh, to participate in this. And so uh, it's very much appreciated. Uh, it is our one and only event to, to reach out to the users every year. And so it's um, always exciting to see these get pulled off. And with that, I welcome you again to the annual user meeting and wish you an awesome week. And I'll turn it over to Chris and Kristen for the next set. All right, great, everyone can hear me. Um, Thank you, Douglas. Uh, and also, thank you to all my co-organizers for this. Uh, it is a huge lift, but once you all do it together, you don't have to carry as much weight. So um, thank you for everyone and their help. Um, so as Douglas noted, there's a, this is a full meeting. We have multiple things happening. We have five uh, sessions over the next uh, three days, but actually over the next two days on different topics. They both have keynotes, or all these sessions have two keynotes rather. And these keynotes we invited because they inspire a lot of the science we do at EMSL. A lot of them are EMSL users. A lot of them are folks that we see outside of the uh, user um, base. Uh, they're doing some really cutting edge science and, and stuff that we want to bring in as a capability. Um, and then we will have some workshops on the third day, uh, a few of them hands-on. Uh, if you're interested in signing up for the workshops or which workshops are available, please scan this QR code. There's still some space available in a few of them. Um, everything from uh, understanding and doing uh, mass spec imaging and how to correlate that data with other modalities to looking at our very cool new technology that we're offering, the Terraform technology, uh, to how to write a successful user project uh, proposal. Um, as Douglas noted, there'll be an executive committee session this will be an opportunity for folks to provide feedback to the executive uh, committee and, and, and give, um, yeah, like I noted, feedback about the future of, of EMSL. Uh, there will be a group photo, photo later today. It should be a little bit sunnier. Um, no rain, so it'll be nice. Uh, some poster sessions this afternoon and at lunch tomorrow. We have a couple flash talks uh, in, in both lunches today and tomorrow. And then as Douglas noted, the evening poster networking reception this evening that is sponsored by Thermo. And then finally, there'll be a tour of EMSL to, to cap off this entire three-day meeting. There's still space uh, to do the EMSL tour. Please sign up here using this form. These QR codes will be up again at the end of this talk. So you can scan uh, if you forgot to do it right now. So just a little logistics. This is a meeting about Mapping and cartography. These are different types of maps that are equally as important to you. Um, this is a layout of this building. Uh, if there is an alarm or any kind of emergency, please go to the nearest exits, which are out there right here. Or if you're in the back, you could also exit out the back. 
um, and then uh, meet in the, the south parking lot right here. Um, there's a few different bathrooms here. There's the uh, uh, there's these two bathrooms here and an all gender bathroom down here in this corner. Um, so that's just a little bit about this this building and some logistics related to emergencies or you know needing to um, use the bathrooms. Um, also for the workshops, everything that we're doing these first two days are here in Discovery Hall. Um, all the workshops will be down in EMSL as well as obviously the EMSL tour. And it will be down here in this south part of EMSL where the um, flagpole is, which is right here. And we'll meet here in this EMSL lobby space. And then we'll go to do the different uh, workshops in, in some of the rooms here and then do the EMSL tour through there. So I'll show this or we'll show this again at the end of the meeting just to remind folks uh, in the meeting tomorrow night, just to remind folks where all the Thursday activities are. Okay, for folks online, thank you for coming and participating. Um, our ask is that you remain muted. I think that's actually an automatic thing. We have to unmute you. Please raise your hand if you would like to speak or participate. But the, for the most part, we're going to be reading questions from the chat. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat window and we will uh, get uh, you, we will ask some of the speakers. Um, and then please, as an in-person session, uh, in-person uh, attendee, if you have a question, we will run around and with a hand microphone to you, please speak into that microphone so the folks online can hear. And maybe also other people in this room can hear as well. All right, so again, here's the agenda. If you wanna scan this, otherwise you can just look at the EMSL user meeting, Google it, and then you'll find the agenda as well. Um, there's a, there was a Zoom link sent out to all the virtual attendees, and then we do have live captioning services in Zoom for those folks uh, that are following on Zoom. All right, so a little bit about EMSL. I, I assume that folks coming to this EMSL user meeting have an idea of what EMSL is as a Department of Energy user facility, part of the BER program. Uh, we have 150 uh, world-class instruments and over 600 users currently. Uh, there's currently over 250 active user projects, and we have multiple different science areas related to environmental transformations and interactions, functional and systems biology, computing, analytics, and modeling. And again, if you want to learn more about each of these science areas, I encourage you to go onto our website. And as a EMSL user, if you become an EMSL user, what you get access to is this laboratory space. You get access to the expertise, like some of the folks that you will hear give talks later today, as well as the equipment. And we always like to say in EMSL, uh, a capability is not just an instrument, but it's also our expertise. And getting access through a user proposal gives you no cost of those capabilities if the proposal is ex accepted through this very competitive peer review process. Um, there's a number of different proposal and sample submission uh, calls, and you can look a little bit more into the, each of these. We have the FICUS, the large scale EMSRO um, research, uh, the exploratory research call, and then the, the new one is the Monet. And again, if you're interested in that Monet um, workshop in November, uh, we can provide more information for you there, but you can also find it on our website and sign up for that. And then one of the things I really wanna highlight here is this environmental science and technology program. So internally, we have an investment as well in developing new capabilities for our users. And a lot of that inspiration comes from these EMSL user meeting, uh, this EMSL user meeting. So again, having an opportunity to provide feedback and what you think would be a very valuable capability is important to us. Um, it's from trying to identify and resolve user questions and and then we want to innovate capabilities around those kind of things. And so you'll see a number of talks today that are, and tomorrow, from EMSL folks that are based upon finding, uh, trying to address EMSL user questions or questions within the general community. And those are all through s and investments. All right, so again, more information on how to propose, submit a proposal. I'll kind of slow down here a little bit if you're interested in the proposal calls. You can scan this QR code, uh, the different expertise in science areas. You can scan that call and then all, uh, that QR code and then the instrument and resources uh, if you're interested in that. And again, we have three different um, science um, 
tracks were uh, focus areas of environmental transformations and interactions, the function, functional and systems biology, and then computing, uh, computing analytics and modeling. And we work together across all three of these science things. Okay, a little bit about the session. So um, as I noted at the beginning of the talk, we have five different sessions that we have planned for you and with two different keynotes in each of these sessions. So the first session is on mapping metabolic processes of environmental systems uh, with spatially resolved mass spectrometry and mass spectrometry imaging. Uh, this is actually really my background. This is my strength and uh, the capability that I help run. Um, so this is pretty close to me. Um, and so we have two folks uh, that have helped co-chair this whole session, identify the speakers we want to invite, and do some of the organization and, and Dushan and Robert. And uh, first, some of the kind of things that you'll see in this session is this new, going back to the s and capability. This was an s and capability that you hear Dushan talk more about, which was expanding the molecular coverage of metabolites with mass spec imaging. So here, one of the things that we we're trying to understand is how do we detect phytohormones in plants and the rhizosphere? How can we, these are very low abundant molecules and they are not readily ionizable. So we developed a new method of on tissue or on sample chemical derivatization in order to do that. And now we can measure all these different types of metabolites that have carboxylic acid groups or uh, ketones or aldehydes. So very, uh, uh, with really high sensitivity and a lot of high confidence in, in that we're actually measuring these. Um, we can also do a thing of where we've measured the soil rhizosphere indirectly. So instead of imaging soil, which is really hard to do with mass spectrometry. You can't really just put a soil core into the mass, spectro uh, mass spectrometer. What we've done is a method of developing an indirect imprinting method and then um, imaging that imprinting. So you'll hear more of those kind of things later today in these talks and, and some of the users, uh, some of the keynote talks will have similar kinds of workflows they've worked through and the kind of science that they've been, been able to resolve with these technologies. For a section, second section with, uh, led by Vimo and Amir, we have spatial and multimodal analysis of plant systems. So one of the things that we're really well known for and that we've uh, really advanced in the last few years is doing this high lateral resolution or high sensitivity proteomics with a lot of coverage, uh, protein coverage that is. So um, you can do this in a spatial manner. So what we have is we can take a leaf tissue or root tissue, we do laser capture micro dissection where we cut the areas that we're interested in. And then we capture those little small tissue functional units or single cells. And we can do very highly sensitive uh, nanopot based uh, chip, uh, this chip assay for doing high uh, protein coverage mass spectrometry. Um, and we've done this with a number of different users. This has been a very high demand capability by our users. We can also do single cells where we did it with uh, protoplast, where we've done cell sorting with the cell one uh, technology. And then we can then do the um, high sensitivity uh, proteomics measurements on that. Um, a couple new technologies you're going to hear about, our new uh, capabilities we have are related to our terraform, um, uh, the terraform sort of theme area. So what we can do is create these rhizotrips or they used to be called synthetic soil habitats. These are optically transparent um, systems where we create a soil-like structure that can be doped with different minerals. Uh, we can look at uh, micro microbe interactions, or in this case, plant microbe interactions, watch them grow with optical microscopy. We can then do other types of uh, microscopy measurements. You'll hear about that in tomorrow's session um, where we're using the, the advanced light sources. And we can also do mass spectrometry in these as well. And then following, this is a user-inspired technology. We had a user, current user still, Eric Wright at Pittsburgh, that came up with this idea of doing uh, what we call the sub-tap. So we generate these 3D printed uh, platforms where we can capture the exometabolome of microbes or plants. And we have this, uh, what we have is a, basically a culture plate with a thin membrane that separates that and this analysis plate. And since these are 3D printed, we can modify them in any design we want. And so we've been doing a lot of this with plants uh, where we're kind of capturing the exometabolone from plant microbe interactions and measuring that with mass spectrometry 
in these capture plates. And then you'll see some, I assume you'll see some of this uh, work with, that we did with a user where we did a multimodal approach of NMR, MALDI, and NanoSIMS to understand how the different changes in metabolism um, within these different plant system where we could also identify with high confidence what metabolism, what was changing in the metabolism, and then do some spatial profiling of where these metabolites were and where any kind of isotopic enrichment is with even higher lateral resolution um, imaging uh, using the nanosim. And the third session today, uh, the, this will be the start of tomorrow, rather, uh, uh, Meng and DeHong have put this together and it's illuminating environmental processes using uh, fluorescence microscopy tools. So this, um, you know, I think a lot of people, when they think of imaging, they think of optical microscopy. So this is pretty, um, Kind of self-explanatory concept but you know we do have a lot of high-end instrumentation when it comes to doing optimal optical microscopy here and this is a, still a very high demand uh emsl user capability we have a couple examples here of where we were able to understand the microbial mechanisms related to uh, nitrogen fixation and uh, duckweed growth and and this is important to biofuel production and nutrient cycling in these aquatic environments so where we could see where different um, bacteria was being uh, infecting these the, uh, the root and where they were localizing and, and relating that back to different types of um, nitrogen fixation processes that are occurring based upon some encoded protein um, um, that fluorescently uh, express when they're activated. Uh, we also have this other example too here where we have uh, we we're able to do light sheet fluorescence microscopy. So get deep 3D, or this is actually lattice light sheet uh, microscopy, uh, fluorescence microscopy, where we're do, able to do deep 3D optical microscopy within these uh, uh, these different cells. This is another EMSL user. Um, and we're, again, this is related to nitrogen fixation, carbon cycling, et cetera. And then our um, sort of mid afternoon late morning session tomorrow is session four which is ran by Arunima and Tomas and it's on imaging environmental processes using advanced light sources so this is using the DOE and the BER's other capabilities of uh, with Argon National Lab SSRL so Stanford Synchrotron Radiation Light Source um, and then I, I think we have some folks from Brookhaven etc and these are other uh, BER capabilities that we utilize a lot and do a lot of collaboration with. And especially now that we're able to do all these other kinds of imaging modalities, we can expand the type of information we're getting from our samples uh, by doing this multimodal imaging approaches. And uh, one of this example is with um, those terraform designs. So this is a, one of our simpler terraform designs when we're looking at fungal processes and how they bridge disparate carbon sources and the effect of mineralogy on that. And what we're able to see, like using different approaches, we were able to see how with secondary ion mass spectrometry, the kind of uh, intake that these fungal hyphae had uh, from the minerals. So they would uh, weather uh, these minerals that had potassium in it, and then they would take these uptake the, the minerals from that. And then with uh, MALDI, um, which you'll hear more about, we were able to to identify the different distributions of the molecular organic acids that these fungal uh, hyphae were excreting. And then with the help of SSRL, we were able then to understand the speciation that they were using to uptake uh, the, the uh, potassium from these mineral sources. So you hear more about that. Um, oh, I have my notes here. Um, so we also have another, we have a couple other examples of using the micro CT here in conjunction with APS. And so the argon um, light source. And so here we were looking at uh, xylem cavitation, oops, uh, under uh, drought under different micro CT. And you can see sort of how uh, this micro cavitation exists uh, and changes and um, how water is, um, the ability to uptake water changes uh, within these uh, these root tissues itself. So we have this 3D profiling of these root tissues with the micro CT. And then in another user example, we're able to also look at the soil mineralogy and do again, uh, this understanding how uh, 
different mineralogy changes the organic matter uh, complex or the organic matter uh, context context um, of the uh, of this soil core. And then finally, in our last session tomorrow, we'll focus on revealing microscale and nanoscale uh, environmental processes and interactions using electron microscopy. We have Jeremy and Odetta that are going to uh, lead that session. And a couple examples, this is from uh, some user work um, that we've been doing where we're looking at uh, fungal interactions with different mineral subsurfaces. And so we, what we can see here is these microbe mineral interactions that are occurring. And this is, out, this is from field samples that we have a mesh bag and the field of these different mineral types. And the only access that the fungus has to the minerals is by going through the mesh with their fungal hyphae. So we can see colonization, organic matter um, starting to form, et cetera. And then another example is the uh, evidence of indirect and, and direct processes of this uh, uh, abiotic and biotic uh, enrichment and aggregation of organic matter complexes. So this is using another multimodal approach of all these different things we have in, um, oops, sorry, in the lab here where we have both uh, atom um, probe tomography, we have secondary uh, scanning electron microscopy, we have some nanosims data, and we also have uh, EDS data. So we can kind of get an idea of what, uh, how, how these are forming on the mineral, what kind of speciation is happening, and where the uptake uh, or organic matter is being formed on these different mineral substrates. And then finally, you'll hear a talk, uh, which Douglas alluded to, is this idea of the EMSL uh, thousand protein fungal, uh, thousand fungal proteins. Uh, right? This is all aimed to uh, characterize the kind of small molecules that these funguses are able, uh, these fungi are able to produce, the kind of protein complexes and heterocomplexes they make, and then as well as the uh, macromolecular complexes. And we wanna do this in an in situ fashion to understand the sort of the fungal cell environment. So you'll hear more about this from James Evans tomorrow. And this is an opportunity to, for folks that are interested in this to engage more with us um, in, in, in this project.